Being a beloved person on reality TV is generally a hard thing to do given just how much these shows can mess with the edit and Hell's Kitchen pushes this to the absolute max. Combine that with the fact that Hell's Kitchen pushes these chefs to the limit when it comes to stress and there's a reason why we've seen more villains than heroes on the show. So with that said, after looking over the most despised chef from each season last week, I figured we'd take a look at the most beloved today and give credit to the chefs who are able to remain positive despite the conditions. As with last week, the only criteria I'll be using is my general gut instinct on who the fans most endure from each season, along with their impact they had on the show. Be sure to like and subscribe to support the channel, and with that, let's take a look at who is indeed the most beloved chef from each Hell's Kitchen season. Bloody hell, here I go again. The pick for season 1, and for that matter, season 3, are pretty easy, as I've talked about these chefs multiple times on my channel given just how similar and inspiring their stories are, with the pick for this season being Elsie. For those of you that don't know, Elsie had literally no line cooking experience whatsoever in her 40 years on Earth, and given she was a stay-at-home mom, and thus likely to be intimidated by Ramsay, and in general falter to the tough elements, she seemed primed to fail. However, she would make it all the way to the final four, showing insane progress throughout the season, with her elimination being the first true heartfelt moment in the show's history. Elsie, you've made a lot of people happy and very proud. And behind that, you've touched my heart. Thank you, Chef. Appreciate it. Keep smiling. Well. You light up the place when you smile. Oh, you're good. I get it. And I'm proud of myself, and the guys are proud of me, and it's a good feeling. I did it! I did it! I did it! Coming into this, it was a long shot. And then I got as far as I did. I didn't win the restaurant, but I won, nonetheless. While you could absolutely make the argument for Keith or Rachel being the most beloved chef from season two, I feel like I have to choose the winner of the season in Heather. After Michael won the OG season using strategic and villainous tactics, Heather would win Hell's Kitchen simply on dominance and skill alone. Even shining as a leader as the only woman in the all-male kitchen, the first chef to ever go through this. Again, even if you don't love Heather, you have to respect her, as she is in some ways the first true legendary figure of Hell's Kitchen. Get it wicked hot first. I totally feel like I'm the babysitter of the blue team. Yeah. Is it hot? No, no, put it back in the oven. Virginia, one minute, I'm ready. Yes, 45 seconds. You ready? I will be in 45 seconds. Let's go. Wellingtons are being served. Coming down. Yes, Heather, chef. this is amazing. Thank you, Chef. Those Wellingtons are cooked perfect. This is the best start we've ever had in Hell's Kitchen. Let's go, Heather, yes? Yes, Chef. They loved the Wellington. Thank you, Chef. That's your best performance ever. Thank you. I'm so happy. Oh my god. That was feels like a dream. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please. The winner of Hell's Kitchen, Heather. <laughs> As I said, my pick for season 3 has such a similar story to Elsie, with that being Julia. However, unlike Elsie, Julia's lack of experience was actually frowned upon in season 3, as basically everyone else on the cast had fine dining line cooking experience, making this Waffle House cook an outcast early on. But Julia would prove everyone wrong, literally having to stand by that season's winner to be taken out, ending an incredible underdog run that damn near led her to making the finale. Come on ladies, we're almost there! Plating the meat, guys! Where's the omelette? Where's right the omelette? Ladies, yes, sir. come here! You just completed your side, well done. Julia, you were exceptional. Don't clear down, get in there and help them finish, yes? Need one minute on this omelet so we can go ahead and set the plates up and by the time it, we do it, it'll be ready. Music to my ears. I think that people underestimated me coming into the competition, but I think today that um, I've most definitely proven that I do know my way around the kitchen and that I belong here. The hero of the Alhambra high school lunch is Julia! I am so excited. I'm more than excited. I'm ecstatic. I can cook. Not only can I cook, but I, I make my food taste good. Oh, thank you, Julia! I know that Chef Ramsay, he's only hard on us to make us better because it's made me so much better. I know that great things will come out of this, you know, just starting with culinary arts school. Clearly, Julia does have it. All she needs is a little more experience. After that, she'll be ready to run her own restaurant. 
My season 4 pick goes to Matt, as the guy fought through surface despite having a migraine. I mean, you have to respect the pure determination and willpower. Oh, come on, I'm joking. Of course, the pick here is Petroza. Yeah, other than Sterling, I don't think there's been a more beloved chef in the show's history than Petroza, as he maintained a strong heart and showed nothing but love for his teammates in this tough and cutthroat competition. And not only that, but he turned into a beast after a slow start and is still considered one of the best to never win to this day. You really can't be much more liked than Petroza. And as always, may he rest in peace. Petroza. Yes, Chef. Who are you nominating and why? I'm gonna nominate myself, Chef. I can't pick any of these guys. They worked too hard and we came in today and worked our asses off. Your level of maturity stands out. You're the most gracious man on that team. Thank you, Chef. Really well done, huh? Let's go. It's been a tough journey. It's been long, but it's been good. It's been good. I've met so many beautiful people. So many beautiful people. How priceless is that? Despite season 5 being such a beloved season, there's really not many standout prototypical love chefs. I mean, yeah, chefs like Giovanni, Roberts, and LA all made deep runs and had their moments, but I don't think they necessarily stand out as super fan favorites compared to other chefs on this list. So with that said, I think it's a toss-up between the final two of Danny and Paula, and due to Danny's arrogance at times, my pick goes to Paula. And yeah, in a similar case to Heather, you can't help but love Paula, as she wasn't about the drama and cattiness that you see a ton from in the show. She simply put her head down and dominated the competition, and yet never got a big head despite her greatness. Again, while I'm sure chefs like Robert and Gio have more vocal fans, I don't think I've ever met anyone who doesn't love Paula, which is why she takes the spot as most beloved chef for season 5. Paula? Yes, chef? Come here. Yes, chef. That's perfectly cooked. Thank you, chef. Absolutely perfect. Thank you. That, madam, yes, chef. is the best Wellington we've ever sent. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Soup. Scott, I don't know what that is, but it's not the watercress soup. Can you redo that, please? Well done. I was channeling a little bit of my inner chef Ramsey, so I, I busted Scott in that one. All right, guys, let's go. Three Wellingtons, one Dory, one minute. Paula is a solid competitor. She is a solid chef. Coming in second place in Hell's Kitchen is definitely not going to stop me. There's so many doors are going to open up. I am not one least bit upset right now. I'm walking out of here a winner. While Van is no doubt an all-time fan favorite, and Tennille's underdog run is still one of the greatest storylines reality TV has ever produced, I simply feel I have no choice but to choose Dave for season 6. As we all know, Hell's Kitchen is tough enough with two working arms, and the fact that Dave was not only able to push through the pain and dominate HK with one arm, but never once complained about his situation, makes it impossible to hate him. This determination and power of will not only makes him remembered as one of Hell's Kitchen's greatest chefs, but one of the most beloved as well. I need you to get that scene to, okay? Come here. I'm not a quitter and I'm not a wuss. I'm fine. I can take the pain and I'm here to stay. I'm okay. Lamb, please. Two lamb going to the window, chef. Yeah. Despite his injury, two lamb coming to the window. Dave manages to complete the first entrees. I can't believe I won. And it's a dream come true. I'm totally in a state of shock. And I had to fight so hard to stay in the competition, but I wouldn't change any of it. I'm just so grateful to have earned Chef Ramsey's respect. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of Hell's Kitchen, Dave! Just like he was a somewhat surprising pick for my Worst Chefs video, I'm going for a bit of a hot take here, as I think Salvatore is the most beloved chef of season 7. Again, considering he was an early boot and a terrible chef, you wouldn't think he'd be very popular, or at the very least, there'd be a more popular chef who made a deep run. And while pretty much all the Black Jacket chefs besides Benjamin are pretty likable, I just simply don't think they're as popular as Salvatore. Now yes, maybe it was more so a level loser type love, but regardless, Salvatore's charm, puppy dog nature, and that Italian accent made him beloved by all his castmates and fans watching at home. And as we know, it's easy to overlook one's flaws when there's such a lovable presence. So how long have you been cooking? Been in the pizza shop for 20 years, chef. And where are you from? Naples, Italy, chef. How long have you been in the US? 21 years. Holy crap. How come the accent's so strong? For a woman. <laughs> God. Girls would like it in America, so I kept it. <laughs> if you don't like it, I'll bring it right back. Oh, you. you're kidding. Okay. <laughs> yes, you chef. went to school, right? No, chef. You did go to school? What were you doing? Came to America because my family needed me, needed money. What were you doing when you didn't go to school? Working every day, chef, to feed, to help my father and my mom's bills. I would love to be married with somebody that cares. How many ladies have you slept with? 
don't know. <laughs> Roughly. <laughs> when did you stop counting? Around 30s, 40s. 30s, 40s. <laughs> Season 8 now, and unfortunately, the list here is pretty limited, as the majority of these chefs were either douchebags or dreadful cooks that are impossible to root for. So with that said, my pick goes to Julian. The funny thing is, Julian started out as a villain, as she actually sided with Sabrina early on, of course one of Hell's Kitchen's most despised chefs, and in general said some pretty nasty things about her teammates. But between her overall shift and attitude, and being one of the few decent chefs that season, fans couldn't help but latch onto her and hope she would be the one to take down Russell. And while she would fall just short, she definitely left Hell's Kitchen with a heroic label on her back. Julian, yes, chef. properly cooked. To do well while I have previous Hell's Kitchen winners in my kitchen, that just makes me so happy. You guys are awesome and you're my inspiration. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Nona. Well done. Good job, Nona. So proud of you. Win the You understand this? I win. Don't take that jacket off. Yes, chef. You deserve to keep it on. Thank you, chef. Good luck. Well done, my darling. This experience proved to me that I have what it takes to be a chef. Julian, perfectly cooked. It's hard, but I did the best I could. I burned my hand, that's why I'm I saw you burn your hand. I'm not gonna give up. I know this isn't the end for me. Like, honestly, I don't feel like I deserve to be standing here. I, I feel like I should be in the final two. But... She made it this far because of her passion and determination. Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough to get her into the final. Season 9 is such a tough pick, might even be the toughest pick for the video, as while I and many other people would absolutely choose Tommy, I truly think the general belief for most beloved this season has to be Will. To this day, he's literally the only chef in Hell's Kitchen history to not make one dinner service mistake all season. I mean, how can you not respect that? And on top of that, while I'm personally not a fan of his over-the-top nature, you cannot deny his absolute love for food and out-of-this-world passion. Man, if only he didn't backstab Jennifer, and this would be such an easier pick. You also have a zucchini and a broccolini on that dish. Get your broccolini going now, get your spinach going, get everything in the pans and let's rock. So if I have to work fish and garnish at the same time, I'm gonna do what I have to do. If you guys me on this fish, man, I'm gonna be pissed. Will's great at calling out and getting everybody on focus. Tommy, five potatoes, bro. People just don't know how to cook. That was like the biggest I've ever experienced in my life, man. I didn't sign up for this. I signed up to win. We're all supposed to be professional chefs, right? I agree. Right? So what the f Like, come on, man. I didn't come out here for second. I came out here for first. But if I had to lose to anybody, man, I'm glad it was Paul. Come here, bro. Give me the f that, you keep your f head of f away, Yeah, bro. Season 10 now, and while guys like Comenza, Justin, and Brian were all very likable, and you couldn't help but root for Barbie due to all she had to go through, the pick here simply has to be Christina. Christina is not only arguably the most well-known contestant to ever come from Hell's Kitchen, but the fact that she was able to dominate and maintain a smooth composure despite having to deal with the bitchiness of the Season 10 Red Team night after night deserves some massive respect. At the very least, when you look up determination in the dictionary, you likely get a picture of Christina Wilson, truly a legend of the show. Dana, you got this. I got, I got you, you got me, yeah? Yes, Jeff. Work it out. Work it out. But this is it, dude. Like, this is your last chance. Like, seriously, pull your shit together. How long? Two halibuts. 45 seconds. Right. right behind, right behind. I'm sorry. It's good. It's good. Yeah, that's good. Halibut. Dana, you just nailed that halibut. Stay there with me, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It feels so good. It's totally amazing. I can barely feel my body right now. I'm incredibly proud of myself and um, just thankful that I have left my mark here. I am excited to go out to Vegas and keep pushing that bar higher and higher until I, until I <laughs> touch the stars. She is the executive chef of all my restaurants in Las Vegas. The winner of season 10 of Kitchen. Please welcome back Christina Wilson. On to season 11, and another very obvious pick here, as the most beloved chef on this season is clearly John. As we all know, the season 11 blue team lost a record amount of challenges, and despite John doing so well so many times, the failures of his teammates would cause him to have to go through constant punishments that he just simply didn't deserve. Due to all this, the fans couldn't help but root for him in hopes he could overcome it all. And while he would fall just short, Ramsey gave him some much deserved praise, as he truly is one of the most unlucky chefs in Hell's Kitchen history, and yet, he was still able to battle through it all, and have an overall very successful HK run. Come here, big boy. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna walk out of here 
as my lone shiny star from that blue kitchen. Do me a favor, stay in touch. I will. Because there's always something around the corner. And you know what? Keep the jacket. Thank you, Chef. You've earned it. It sucks not to be in the final pairing, but uh, it was a hell of a ride. Being on the blue team was hard. The losing team tonight is the blue. John, you had the highest scoring dish. But once again, you've lost. But knocked me down a little bit. And I just got back up. The winning dish belongs to John. You know, I guess in the end, even I couldn't survive the curse of the blue team. Damn, it would have felt good to be in that last two, though. There's so many likable chefs from season 12, but the most likable of them all is without question Rochelle. Seriously, I think she had a smile on her face literally 90% of the time she was on screen. Like, how is that possible, especially on a show like Hell's Kitchen? But yeah, she's basically the female version of the next chef on the list, as her personality and positive attitude is simply infectious, and I truly cannot fathom how one could dislike Rochelle. Hello, my name is Rochelle. Okay, well first of all, <laughs> what is so funny? nervous and very excited for Chef Ramsay to try my food. It is um, a sauteed chicken. <laughs> Wait, Rochelle. Oh, crap. Please, please be perfectly cooked. Please be cooked at all. Perfect. OK. Absolutely perfect. Sauce, please. OK. You've never worked in a professional kitchen on the line. You cook like you've been working in a kitchen for five years. Oh, thank you, Chef. <laughs> Let me tell you oh, something. I didn't mean to giggle. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Never in the history of this competition have I seen someone that has been so energetic. You're gonna have a very bright future, let me tell you. Thank you, you so much. <laughs> Keep a straight face and give me your jacket. Oh. <laughs> I knew you could do it. No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> The most beloved chef for season 13 is the chef that likely takes a spot for most beloved chef of all time, with that of course being Sterling Wright. And yeah, take what I said about Rochelle and put it here for Sterling, as it's simply impossible to not love the guy, unless your name is Steve. But yeah, Sterling is simply a legend of the show, as his kind soul and smile will live on forever in the HK fandom. <laughs> I'm always 100. What's his 100? I'm 100%. Okay, know? 100%, yes, right. Listen to me, please. Coming up next, four Florentines, one French toast from this side, one crepe. Feel like I was doing orchestra. French toast crepes, Florentine. French toast crepes, Florentine. How long? Florentine. How long? It felt good. The key ingredient I used was love. <laughs> what does love taste like? You're tasting it now. <laughs> the one dish that stood out that was a clear winner for all of us. Sterling, good job. Ah, with love. Woo -woo! That was up. That's blue, baby. Season 14's cast is one of the most beloved casts in the show's history, as the majority of the chefs were very good and general hardworking people. But one big man stood out from the rest, with that of course being Millie. Millie is the definition of a giant teddy bear, and while he actually did have some fiery moments in both his seasons, his general kind-hearted nature despite his stature and unreal passion for food remains unmatched. You okay? Um... What's on your mind? I just need so much more experience. <laughs> That's it. You underestimate yourself. You can cook. Yeah, Chef. Chef Ramsay is expecting a lot out of me. I can't let him down. You know, I can't let myself down. So, you know, it's go time. All of you are going to be giving back to the Midnight Mission. It's committed to providing great food and counseling to people in need. So, I volunteered your services. Yes, sir. Are you okay? No, it's a good deed. It's, it's a, a good deed. It's an amazing deed. People don't understand how real it is when you can't run back to your mom or you can't run back to the family house. Just outside. Food's emotional for you. Yes. That connects. Where does that come from? Food is actually the only thing mm -hmm. that I've put 100% in. You get it back? I get my 100% back. You are one of the most passionate chefs I've ever met. It's so nice to see. I always say how season 15 and 16 are such similar seasons, and that goes for the beloved picks as well, as both these chefs had extremely similar arcs. For season 15, my pick is Manda, a lovable chef by nature given her stature and spunky attitude. She was able to overcome a somewhat slow start where she was an outcast on the red team and integrated herself on the blue team despite having a little sexist in the kitchen. This led to her just sneaking into the black jackets, a great run for the definition of an on paper underdog. In this competition, I'm looking forward to everybody else underestimating me. <laughs> Awesome. I may be little, but I have big flavor. What is that? Um, so I have a pan-seared salmon with a tomato fennel salad on top. Love the fennel. 
and tomato salad. That's a very solid four. Ah, hell yeah, we'll take this chick on our team. Good job. Thank you, chef. Well you can make it in Hell's Kitchen. You can make it absolutely anywhere. Right. Enough with the attitude. I can't wait to go home and show my kids this new and improved mommy. Jack, Dylan, Audrey, mommy is coming home. Get ready. As I said, the pick for season 16 is very similar in Kim. Kim was also a somewhat weak chef, especially compared to all the other strong red team chefs early on, but was able to scratch and claw her way to the black jackets. And yeah, she's definitely sweet and all, but there's really not much more to say than that. But in a season like 16, all you need to do is be somewhat rootable to stand out from the rest of this toxic cast. I've thrown the most out of anybody in this entire competition. More than anyone else, I do deserve a black jacket. Congratulations, Kimberly. Can we get your black jacket? Well done. Thank you. Uh, good job. Oh, thank you, Sean. Amazing. Thank you. I can't believe I made it. I'm so excited. I've come from nothing and I've worked my way up. It's like being a poor person and ending up as a CEO. It's the greatest reward ever. I'm proud of you. Thanks. While Nick was a generally liked chef in season 14, it wasn't until All Stars where he really shined to the fan base to become a legend of the show. And not only did the guy dominate an All Star season, but he defended his close friend Michelle after dealing with Elise's antics. And of course, even the biggest Nick haters had to feel for him when he got screwed out of the win due to the final three finale twist. But even though Nick wouldn't win All Stars, he certainly won over all our hearts. This dish is inspired by my husband because we always eat ribeyes at home. Yeah, I can see why he married you. <laughs> five for five, young man. Yeah, thank you. I was eliminated on season 14 because of the meat station. It's like a traffic light. Walk in strips. Let's go. New York strip, perfect. Thank you, Thank chef. You, chef. Woo! Huge sigh of relief. Service, please. The first chef progressing into the finale is Nick. Ah! Well done. Let me tell you something. Yes, chef. You have improved more than any other chef that I've invited back. You're a fast learner and it shows. Thank you, chef. Season 18 is a very interesting pick, as even though the show brought back some all-time fan favorites, a lot of them were either bust or not that big of a personality compared to their first season. And while I could see the argument for Trev, I think it's between the newbie chefs of Mato and Mia, and narrowly, I gotta go with Mato. Again, it's very tough for me to choose him, as while he wasn't actively a part of the bullying of Trev, he certainly didn't do much to stop it. But nonetheless, the guy was a standout chef talent-wise, and showed a ton of respect throughout his run, which of course culminated in him laying down his chance to change his life forever, to go back to Baton Rouge instead to one up the culinary scene. While he's definitely not a Mia type personality, it's very hard not to root for Mato. Growing up, like we got a cane field, move so many loads of dirt. Nothing in life comes easy, dude. Nope. Grew up in the country. I've been through way worse than this. And I started picturing my grandfather. He wouldn't have let me slack off on a load back then, so I'm not slacking off now. Hard work doesn't scare me. Hard work is the reason I've got to this point in my career. I put forth myself. Tell me why. Chef, this has been an incredible journey. I want to go back and share this wealth of knowledge that you've given me to elevate that town's culinary scene because it's not going to do it on its own. But I respect your decision. Mono, step forward. You know, never before across this competition have I met a chef as sincere as you. Thank you for the opportunity, Chef. Oh, man. Bye, Motto. Season 19 may just be the toughest pick of them all, as literally all the final six, minus Amber, are some of the most beloved chefs in the show's history. However, if I had to choose just one, my pick nearly goes to Mary Lou. While maybe she didn't have the underdog narrative that Nikki had, she represents the positive nature of the season 19 cast to a T with her infectious smile and spunky attitude. And of course, her showmance with Cody is one of, if not literally the only cute showmance in the show's history. And to be blunt, I think there's also one other obvious reason why she stands out from the rest of the cast. <laughs> You're a nice person. And you're, and you're pretty. Yes. Thanks, buddy. I think Cody's very nice. I really like talking to him. I'm having fun getting to know him. Uh, speak. Yay, I win! <laughs> Give it up for our Hell's Kitchen finalists, please. Corey and Mary Lou. Ah, oh, my God. What? I feel so validated, so... 
so recognized. I feel like I, I just didn't know my full potential. Now it's like, oh, I feel the power. Season 20 Young Guns, and we have another easy choice, as the pick here is Steve. And in an interesting spin from the other chefs on this list, while most of the heroic chefs are spunky and full of joy, Steve was very quiet and had an overall monotone personality, but that's exactly what made him so loved by the fan base, as in a show full of over-the-top personalities, Steve's cool and collective attitude earned a massive respect from Ramsey, his teammates, and the fans watching at home, and yet despite his straight face, you could absolutely tell he had a massive passion for food due to his hardworking nature. Shrimp and grits, grandmama's favorite. Grandma taught me to make grits from a young age. You know, perfect grits, always. I'm definitely feeling grandma, her spirit is kind of channeling through my spine. I can feel it a little bit. I feel like she would be so proud seeing me thrive doing something that I absolutely love to do and seeing something that she inspired me to do. Why shrimp and grits? Uh, shrimp and grits was always like my grandmother's favorite dish. And I mean, she's the whole reason I'm here. She's the one who got me started in cooking. Dish is well executed. It's got a great visual impact. Good job. Well done. The final chef to receive a black jacket is Steve. Jump. I think you've just cooked the best dish you've ever produced in this competition. Thank you, chef. It's one of the most passionate dishes I've tasted from you. Thank you, chef. I don't know if I could have done this without old Nana, because the whole reason I got this jacket is because of that woman. I'm just so grateful that she took the time to teach me all the things that she taught me. We finish off with a unique case here, as Battle of the Ages had a lot of like chefs, but no true beloved chefs. So with that said, my pick for this season goes to Alex. Not only was he a standout personality compared to a somewhat forgettable cast, but he dominated HK en route to becoming the first ever 40 plus winner, becoming one of Hell's Kitchen's all time greats in the process. The love of food, background, where did it start? I started in the industry before food was really a cool thing in Nashville, so I was very much self-taught, and then I opened my own restaurant in 2018. And what happened? Uh, COVID. Right. Brutal. Words can't. Yeah. Well, you're here now. I am. Three. I just want Hell's Kitchen. What? You want to talk about the ultimate moment of validation for 24 years of hard work? Tonight it happened. So there you have it guys, my picks for the most beloved chef from each Hell's Kitchen season. Once again, let me know what picks you would change in the comments below. And be sure to check out my most hated chef video from last week as well. Be sure to subscribe and like for more HK videos like this. And until next time, have a good one guys. Get out of there.